Hi guys, today I'm going to talk to Ken Carpenter, a true Hellraiser legend, yes. So I'm gonna ask him about, well, how did he got into the movies, about the makeup, was it very uncomfortable, his relation uh, with uh, Doc Bradley. So let's go, but remember, if you love horrors, if you love Hellraiser, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell, and we start with Ken asking him about how did he got into the Hellraiser movie. You know, I'll tell you a quick story about this. Um, okay. Larry Mortoff, who was a producer of the of this movie, he was one of the producers, and he and he plays the bum in, in the front of the movie with it. You know, he gives the statue away. Mm -hmm. uh, and Larry had come to me and said, uh, "Hey Ken, you know, I, I'm doing a couple movies down in the south, uh, you know, in, in uh, North Carolina." And uh, I said, okay. And he said, one of them is Children of the Corn 2 and Hellraiser 3. And I said, uh, I said, well, I'm waiting on a movie to do. I was going to do a wilderness movie with Dan Haggerty and Bill Smith. Uh, so I was kind of waiting on that. He said, you're going to be waiting all day for that one. You know, he mm -hmm. said, uh, you to go on this. And finally he came back to me and I passed on Children of the Corn. I shouldn't have. I should have done it. But he, uh, I passed on it, and he came back to me and said, "You want to do Hellraiser?" And I said, "Sure, why not?" <laughs> so uh, he he packaged me up and sent me down the road, and I landed, landed in North Carolina. Great, and, great, uh, great choice actually to be in, in the, such a like uh, at the moment Hellraiser. It's a uh, ten movies. Like they're making another one. They're making a Hellraiser. I, I don't think it'll be called Hell Hellraiser 11, but they're making right now another one. And uh, uh, Pinhead actually will, will, will be played by, a, by a, a woman. It'll be a female character, which is kind of like, if you know Clive Barker's books, you know that a Pinhead wasn't the main character in the books. But it all all happened like like that because of the problem with the with the prosthetics with the uh, with with the makeup pretty much. So the female character in the first part in the first movie couldn't she couldn't talk talk too much. So they kind of changed it and then it it was uh, about a, a pinhead. But y your character in 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 the in the in the movie you know first you're you're the camera and then you're the camera head. Tell me a little bit about it. Like I would say that was was it did it take you long i mean not you but did it take a makeup crew long to put put it all on you onto you well my you if you, you the the other character that I played was doc mm -hmm. with, with really long hair my hair was way down to here yes Fu man shoe mustache and um and that was all my real hair and everything so when they put this package together they grabbed all my hair and bundled up on the back of my head put a skull cup on me yeah and then and then called and then they put the mask on me and the mask came around my eyes down around my face like that mm -hmm. and all the way down here and then they started gluing all these things to you know gluing all the openings to my face <laughs> but, but, but but first they had to put this apparatus which was a camera on my yeah. eye which I think was my I think it was your your right eye, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, probably my right eye. Yeah, and so that meant I was partially blind for the most part because you couldn't see out of the damn thing. And yeah. so it took about, I'm saying, two hours or better. Yeah. To put all that makeup on because they put on like multiple, you know, like there was like seven or eight coats of white makeup that went into it, and um, it was kind of uh, it was interesting, you know, as I sit there and did it. Uh, the, the, those guys are really incredible. The makeup artists were just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. the cool guys. And you know, and I got to say this that I, I think that the, the camera head vision of this thing was before all of the ones from the Star Trek, you know, the, the other guys on Star Trek that have mm -hmm. the, the, I think they borrowed that from camera head. Yeah, Borgs. I think, yeah, Borgs, they, they, were, they were called, yes. Uh, yeah. Well, you are the you are the inspiration then, so for for that. And uh, actually, I I've read some art uh, some interview with with the Doc Bradley who played Pinhead, and like like good for you that you got in the third part, of course, because on, tr throughout the first and second part they kind of figured out how to make it a little bit faster, maybe you know a little bit easier. But Doc Bradley said that he spent it on the on the first movie around eight hours while they were putting a Pinhead makeup on him, so like you know. Lucky, oh, lucky, yeah. for, lucky you that it only take a, took around a, let's say two or three hours, you know. Doug took a long, a longer time, much, much longer. And I, and the other characters, uh, you know, that were in there too, they took a little bit of time too. Uh, 
Peter Atkins, you know, had a he had to do something with his character, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, but I think that I probably had more dialogue than any of them, and uh, just because and because of the nature of the two characters that I played. Mm-hmm. Yes, you did because, uh, like, like not not only you're the cameraman for the for the journalist for the main main character of the movie. Uh, and then th- that's this is pretty much your your uh, all talking. But then like other Cenobite Cenobite is uh, he's a DJ, so he doesn't speak whatsoever, you know. And yeah. I think some other are just just a, a, a guest in the club, you know. So pre- pretty much, I would say apart from Pinhead in this movie, you're probably the only one, the only one uh, character who speaks, yeah. you know. Well, that and, and, and the fact that uh, the guy that played the character that who bought the statue and owns the club, he had. You know, he got sucked into it too. <laughs> yes, he did. Yeah, and so he had he had a, a significant amount of dialogue too. He's a pretty good guy too. I like him. He, he was. Yeah, I'll tell you a story about him. He was married to uh, a La Polania, a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a a Apollonia was her name. Okay. And we were, I met her down at the, uh, at, the, at one of the events in LA when we went down to the Hollywood, it was a Hollywood, it wasn't a Hollywood ball. It was down near the airport and we did a, a, a screening down there with all the, uh, you know, and there was a whole bunch of different people down there. I was the only Hellraiser person down there, but it was, it was very cool. It was fun. And it, as a cast, because like I said, it was the third part of the movie. Obviously, there was a different director because Anthony Anthony Hickox directed the, the the third part. But uh, like we we already said that, that Doc Bradley was was pinhead. What was your relationship between uh, between uh, you and, and and Doc Bradley? Like, did you get did you get along? Was it like awkward, or what what what, what way it worked with him? Because you know he was already established a horror star by the time you know. I, I got along with Doug. Doug, Doug, and I were good friends. You know, we, we uh, you know, we were we were back in. Uh, we'd gone back to I guess we we're in New Jersey for a uh, uh, Hellraiser event, and we were back there. And he said, "Man, he said I didn't tell uh, Peter Atkins a story about you told me, but he said that uh, you told me, you know, take the next one to the space shot." Up in the, you know, and I said, yeah. he said, it did. He said, I didn't say him to him, man. He said, I said, I, you know, I said, well, you know, he, he Peter Atkins did what he wanted to do, you know. Hellraiser 2 was in the 2250, I think, you know. Yeah, it was on a spaceship and all, like, kind of, well, you would, I would say, uh, Clive Barker said that after the first three parts, he wanted some, something different, you know, fresh, you know, not another another copy, another copy, you know. Uh, it worked worked out better or worse, you know. Depends. If you're a fan, you're a fan. That's it, you know. So that's way, like, like even on my T-shirt, if you can see, well, in here, you, you can see there's a, a pinhead in here. So, so in oh, here, yeah. big, big, big fan of the of the of the of the French, like all horrors, I would say, you know, not only not only uh, Freddy Krueger, but all of those uh, slasher horror i'm just a big geek you know like i know with the, with the gray hair but i'm just a geek you know there there's when i was also back there with the, with talking to peter to uh to doug bradley and i said what he should have done i thought i'd like to see them do something what they did with uh um uh, it's a different series of of uh, bad guys or i'm trying to play um oh it was with uh what was it what was the guy that played the uh He was an English actor, and he was uh, he ate people and all this other stuff. Um, uh, do you know who? I'm, who yeah, I'm, you're talking about uh, Silence of the Lambs, Anthony Hopkins. No, it's it's Anthony no. Hopkins. is yeah. the character. Okay, so it's a Han- Hannibal Lecter, Silence of the Lambs, with with Jodie Foster. And then they went back to the begin in the beginning where they how yeah. they came up with the concept. Yes, it and is. I said they do the same thing with Hellraiser. And he kind of agreed with me with that. I don't know if they're going to do that now. No, they should. I said, you've got to come up with a better story of how that box arrived mm-hmm. and give credence to that because that's really what it's all about. 
I think um, they, they, they bit, did a bit because of the budgetary restraints. I think they did a bit of, of it in a part either four or five, you know, when the La Marchand created the box, you know, how they summoned it, you know. But there is and there's a little bit about a, a pinhead as well, well, about a captain. He's some sort of captain and during the World War One, I, I would say, but it's not a lot, you know, it's not a lot. Altogether, they, they're, they're telling a bit of story, but like, uh, yeah, of course, I would like to see a, a, more about it you know right now all those remakes reboots are are very i would say on time you know we just got the texas chainsaw massacre not so long ago scream like i said we are getting new hellraiser that will be played uh, by a female, female actress you know so like i do not know what's the story with the new one i do not know what will be the story of of, of this movie but i hope that they'll, they'll just deliver you know I gotta laugh because I think that that's hilarious. Uh, <laughs> good one. That, that, that's a that's a really really you know, good one. It, 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 Doug Bradley's probably sitting over there laughing too, saying, "What? You could do that? Make me a uh, email?" Okay. Right. Yeah, because Doug Bradley he did I think six or seven movies as as a pinhead. Then then he said like, "Yes, he did seven or eight. I don't know." A lot. He did a lot, actually, a lot of them. But he didn't came back for the last two or three, and uh, well, I'm not not surprised why, you know, because like if you seen that, uh, I would say those two parts that I've seen recently, they were I think shot in uh, Romania and for the you could say in Hollywood for peanuts. So you wouldn't expect that will be the quality will be really, really high. But uh, actually, I it was just just that much, and I would become uh, one of the producers of the. Hellraiser from 20, I think 18 or 2019. Like I'm a member or on uh, IMDb Pro, and they were looking for a for a for a cash. So pretty much, what would be your job is just like I think they were looking for like five thousand dollars. You 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 send it to the to the production company. Uh, you will be ob obviously credited, and if there's there will be a profit of it, they will send you money and some uh, some extra, you know. And I said like it, I uh, looked who's it doing it. I said no no, just no point. And then I I read on on the IMDb that the movie made I think uh, with all the budget the movie made like fifty thousand dollars, you know. So I said like yeah, no. They've no. gone down. They've gone down a lot. I think ours made uh, three went made pretty good pretty good money. I think. I think so. Actually, I, I can to be honest, I, I can probably check it right now. Uh, we'll see. Can is it, is is the data on on the on the IMDb? Because actually, I'm here uh, at the moment. Uh, yeah, movie did did uh, with the budget around five mil. It did uh, nearly thirteen millions. So like, yeah, it it, it came it came back very nicely. Yeah, and it's only like I said, and it's only from the uh, from the cinemas. You know, like the, the the IMDb doesn't include well on the time it will be a, a VHS. You know, neither Blu-ray or all those Netflix and uh, all those money. So like I would say, those those movies, those those first I would say three or four Hellraisers are still making nice uh, nice money for the uh, for the producers. I, I, I get residuals from it all the time. When when I, when I was looking through through, through your your bio, it was saying that it, you did some you've written some books. I have. I've written. I'll show you these books. I've yes, because I, I I'm uh, definitely uh, the fa are, fans fans of the Hellraiser series will be interested in it as well. You know. Flight of the Angel and the Winds of Allah. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah. That's the first one. Okay. And. This, but it's but the, the screenplay is about 150 pages long, and it's nothing like the book. That's the first one we set for production, and it's about two million, two hundred million dollars. Wow, it's a lot. Of money. I mean, it's uh, I. We have some people looking at it, and I, I don't know if we're going to go on it, but we're going to try. Second one was Conquest of the Conquistadors. Okay. Part one, and part two. There's two parts to this one. Okay. Uh, the third one was. The fourth one was. Flight of the Angel and the Wrath of Chang about the South China Sea. All right. That's, this, this is a pretty good book. Then this one here, which is about the return of the Bolshevik, is all about Putin. This is about what's going on over there right now. All right. And that's a pretty good book. And then the last one is called. Revolution of the Patriot. And that's a pretty good book too. I'm reading it now again, but you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get into these books because I'm trying to see if they're gonna work, you know. Mm -hmm. And I I'll tell you, 
I really think the first book is going to be the, the blockbuster. And I think it's going to be huge. Lovely. Well, it, to, to the viewers, it, if I'll find a link to the book, so it'll be down in, in the in the description, so you, you you can check it. You can order those books. You can read them, and uh, yeah, why not support support the good cause, support a, a great a great author, great great actor. Yeah, you can actually you can actually go to kencarpenterii.com, and it'll take you immediately to a website uh, where you can see these books. They're all on Amazon. No problem. So, so all those links will be in the description, so you can just go there directly and you can order and, and enjoy the uh, piece of good book. So like, exactly. exactly. But I, just, I was just cautioning people that were reading the first one. This the movie will be quite different, yeah, a lot more exciting, a lot more exciting than I think the book. But uh, it's okay. Books yes. change, you know, from the movie anyway. Um, they do they do to be honest yes i'm just uh, trying trying to figure out uh, is is there uh, any any info on the new hellraiser movie to be honest because i'm i'm kind of uh, curious uh, is there any update on, on, on it will it be coming to a cinemas or any uh, anything about it but it just shows 2022 so it'll be it'll be this year so uh it's a it's a reboot of the 1987 movie so they'll go and they'll go and start start to do it uh, all over again you know so there's it's a not not sequel it's not a, a requel which is very popular with the with the scream and the texas chainsaw massacre but uh yeah well we we, we shall see how it'll go you know because I'm, I'm like i said I'm, I'm as a fan of the series i'm, I'm really interested in jamie clayton she's playing the she's playing the pinhead so and uh, it's it's a, it, i don't know know her either it's right now in the post-production so i would say that they got it all uh, done up uh, as well that it doesn't say will it be a cinema release or will it be any Netflix or, or Amazon or HBO but I would say probably within the next uh, next few weeks we'll know some more difference if there'll be any, any infos people I'll let you know of course it'll be uh, everything on this uh, this channel overall Ken like because like Hellraiser 3 it was year, years ago as, as, uh, as we uh, both know and it was 1992 Actually, it was exactly thirty years. Thirty years ago, this uh, this year. Mm, what what's your what's your point of view? What is your look on the on the Hellraiser where it uh, evolved? I know, like you said, it went a bit bit down, but uh, are are you, are, you happy, are you happy with it altogether? Oh uh, yeah, I'm very happy with it. There was a, there was a famous statement I made in here in this uh, in this in the Hellraiser book. And I said, it's the epitome. Hang on a second. I'll get it for you here. Um, and it's just, it was, I thought it was kind of novel because it said, I was fascinated by the process of transforming me from Doc into Camerahead. It is the epitome of what every actor wants to do, being able to portray the evil side as well as the good. Mm -hmm. And that was on his page in Hellraiser, and I I thought that that was pointed, and I thought, but I but more than more than that, I thought that's really what my attitude was. It was nice to see that character. You know, they gave me a little bit more of Doc. It would have been nice, but uh, and Camerahead was like, what are you going to do once you got the mask on? You know, there's not much you can do. They're going to do it for you. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I mean, it it came along nicely. I was I can tell you about the opening night when we got into makeup the first day, and uh, they cut me loose with a with a, a, a armed guard. <laughs> how we get around? And I, was, I we walked out into the street, and I looked down the street, and at the far end of the street, I saw a bunch of kids, and they're just out there looking at and everything and I said well let's wander down that way come on it's a good idea so away we went down to the other end of the street and I saw this, these kids in there and I realized they were all uh, they had uh, Down syndrome okay and so I walked up to him I said listen you can touch my costume but don't touch my face I said, uh, you, you know, and they were all grabbing my costume and stuff. And the guy was saying, and 
And I said, just wanted to show you what it's like that this is character mm -hmm. is just a fiction of your imagination. It's nothing real. So you don't have to go back and go to sleep tonight and have bad dreams about it. Yeah. And I said, so it's just make believe. And uh, then I heard from the other end, I said, what's Carpenter doing down there? What the hell is going on now? <laughs> He's supposed to be close to that. You know, they said, get him away from those kids and don't let them take pictures. I said, what the hell? Yeah. So I, uh, the guy grabbed and pulled me back and we went on about our business filming for the rest of the night. But uh, it was fun. That was a fun thing, I thought. You know, I always like to keep people clear. Yeah, because like back in the day, like when the, when the Hellraiser tree uh, was was made, it was still, I would say, mainstream. I don't maybe not in. I would say like right now, right now movie with a Tom Cruise or 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 one of those stars, but it was still uh, very famous. Like to those days, like when you say uh, say Hellraiser, like the old Pinhead, it works as well very well as as a Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and and uh, other like a Chucky and and other likes uh, like that. So it, it must be a It, it had to be a big thing, you know, like shooting all this, like, like I'm, I'm an indie filmmaker. So the biggest crew I ever had on my shorts, which was probably including pre-production and post was like 50 people. You know, I would say there was a lot, a lot, way, way more people working on, on this Hellraiser, on, on this Hellraiser movie. You're right. There were, and there were a lot of those guys were from down there and they were down there. And these, a lot of these guys were the, uh, the grips were all from North Carolina or South Carolina, wherever down there. And, Uh, they prime me up on they give me a bit of this this they drink that they make down there and then you know it's like a, <laughs> it's it's, a, it's a hot whiskey you know it's 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 pure alcohol grain alcohol and, oh. and, it's, and it's it was it was nasty stuff boy you you could drink a little bit you only sipped it just sipped it because it was a seriously pretty dangerous so uh but anyway I, yeah, that was another story You know, and there's a few stories of the nighttime activity of all of this going on about and stuff. And coming back from Hellraiser, I felt, you know, I felt really good about it. You know, I thought it was cool. I thought it was a very, very interesting character I got to play. And, um, yeah, I don't think it got me. It may have got me. I did actually work for Larry on another project after that. So, um, uh, it wasn't a dead end. But, uh, yeah. and I'm, Mm -hmm. You know, and I've gone to Europe. I've been in Germany. I've been in England a couple of times, and and you know these shows. You know, people want to see you know the character and stuff. Yeah, you and, you, uh, you get some crazy people from Poland calling you. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in here, in yeah, Poland? yeah, Poland, you, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 wow. yeah. Well, well, I'm 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 living last last few years. I'm living in in Ireland, but but uh, like uh, I'm from Poland. Like now, born, raised well, in Poland. I think somebody else bought it, didn't they? Uh, Hellraiser at the moment. Uh, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll look it, look it up. Who's who's doing doing it? You know, uh, what's the name of the company? Who do we have in here? Uh, some some some. Uh, we have uh, Phantom Four Films and Spyglass Media Group. So it's a Spyglass. Spyglass. And, they've done some good things. I saw. Yeah. I watched. And and if you look on the distributors, as a distributor, uh, we have a Hulu, which is a, a streaming platform. So it'll go on uh, on Hulu, uh, Hulu Hulu streaming platform th th this year, you know. So it'll won't be it won't be a movie sent to the cinemas. It'll be it will be streamed uh, on online v VOD. You know. Yeah, they did some good stuff because actually I'm just looking right now through their their stuff and we have Nightmare Alley, which is new Guillermo del Toro movie, which is uh, Oscar nominated. Like tonight, we'll we'll see who will he get it. He did the series. Uh, they did the series Pam and Tommy about Pamela Anderson, you know. And I'm just looking through it. Uh, American Horror Story, which is like no very very important uh, TV TV series and some other. So like yeah, Sonic even even they did the Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, based on the on the video game. So, uh, well, I would they, say. So, so I'm wondering is that, uh, um, okay, well, I, I lost the thought, you know. Anyway, I was just thinking if that they had done anything, when you say uh, Spyglass, they did some other major pictures, I think. Mm -hmm. um, some, you know, pretty good ones. I think some pretty higher budget numbers. Well, um, we, 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 shall, we shall see how it will turn up. Like I said, Uh, uh, 
there's no date in it apart from it that it'll be a 2022 you know so it'll be this year but they do not give any anything uh, anything else title is just the hellraiser nothing else so far so uh i don't know like uh, as a fan uh, i'll yeah i'll go and i'll watch it but you see is it the same what they did with the, with like i said with the, with the chainsaw texas massacre chainsaw with the new halloween you know like you're looking on the new movie but you have in, in the back of your head that you've seen the story so you want something different take on it you know do it do it better do it uh, like maybe update it because like a lot of movies they do in those days like the the exorcist is getting a remake and when i heard about it i asked why the old one is is done well it's still a scary movie uh, after all those years technically yeah they did it they did it perfectly max von side of oh yeah he, he's a great actor in it you know linda blair as well as as, as the victim so sometimes there's like there's only one one reason money money you know it's unfortunate they can never sequels don't ever pay off usually yeah hell was i think lucky i think hell three was it was the probably the best of them i you know i'm i think that it was as good as the first one well fir- um, first one was it was a uh, unique it was different you know like i've read an uh, interview with, with clive barker that when he approached the studio so they on the time because it was 1987 studio wanted uh, either uh, pinhead to be a quiet man like like a jason war he's from friday the 13th or or uh, michael myers from halloween or to be a, a wisecracker like freddy krueger you know with the one-liners and he said no pinhead is a pinhead he is unique in in it in itself so it's not gonna he's not gonna copy jason i'm not gonna copy freddy freddy krueger you know it has to be a different one and i would say this was the big big uh, part of it you know yeah first one was had a budget around one million pounds and it did around 14 15 million dollars so like yeah i would say yeah similar to the hell, hell tree you know that was what the first one did yeah that's what the, what the first one did yeah. yeah well that was pretty close to what they did in three then exactly you know so yeah but that was because it was, they did marketing I, th- I thought they did a good job at the marketing of it you know it is what it is and um I'm happy. I'm grateful. I'm glad that I got the chance to do the movie. It was a great, great movie to do. I think exactly. You're you're right now in in the history of the of the horrors. You're one of the you're one of the legends. Like how many people in the world can say, "Listen, I played Cenobite." You know, I was in the Hellraiser movie. You know, like who did it? Like, you know, it, it's fantastic because there's maybe through all of those those movies, maybe there is probably around twenty. Maybe there's a little bit more Cenobites, you know, because you, you get difference on on a different different part, you know. So yeah, you know, apart from a, I would say apart from a Pinhead, for me you are, are uh, one of the most uh, recognizable. Yeah, one of the the one that I, I could actually I can I, I can see, you know, you're very characteristic as well. So and the, I liked that like you are the cameraman and then you're a camera head. Yeah, how's it going on the background, lad? You're 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 the camera camera head, so like the the features are very very like you know connected to what your character, what Doc, did in this in this movie, you know. Yeah, well, they take me out of bed when I'm when I, that whole scene with when Terry Farrell calls me and says, "Yeah, and meet you over there," and I said, "Okay," and when she comes over there, I'm already there, mm-hmm. and I mean they've already got me inside the wall. I had to, and what I had to do with that scene was uh, I had to lay down on the opposing wall in the next room and they'd cut a hole in the concrete and everything else and shove my body. Then I, my body went underneath the wall and came up on the other side. And on the other side, they had this dummy body <laughs> laying there, all my dr- dressed like me with my head in my lap. And yeah. so it was like, it wasn't, this is not a technical, this is not a, uh, one of the things of oh we're going to do the cgi on this one no, no. they didn't it has to be done it practically was, yeah it was a real mccoy and uh so it was like uh, it was awkward and but it was it was good and uh i, I you know it's okay it was cool i liked it so but as well, this is the ad- advantage of those old horrors, and I would say, you know, like I, I'm quoting Hellraiser, Friday, and Freddy Krueger. But like those days, I have a feeling that producers again they think more, more about the CGI. Yeah, let's put more blood, more this, more this, instead of focusing on the on on the story. You know, like make the horror story driven. Not like I've seen many many remakes, reboots, sequels when they just oh yeah, we just 
put a uh, way way more blood you know we'll just slash 300 people extra you know and all and sometimes it doesn't work you know just get the i think alfred hitchcock said it when you have a good script you can make either a good movie or bad movie when you have a bad script you can't make a good movie you know so like uh, when you when you have a good story and you're like you said you're doing this real mccoy not just like oh yeah we'll just do it in a computer effects are way way better than then you know the like it is that's that's, that's my take on it you know no, I totally, I totally agree. I think it was, it was good, and I was, I'm, I'm delighted that, that they did it that way because I'm, I'm, that's everything I want to do in this new movie I'm doing called the Flight of Angels and the Winds of Allah is going to be done with natural stuff. It's not, it's, there's no, we're not going to cheat any of it, and we're also going to do all the war game with that. So nice. Really, and when, when do you hope to start, start uh, making this movie pre-production and all? Is there any, any date uh, in your, in your head? I'm, you know, I'm, I'm hoping we get, you know, we have a, um, we have the money people, but they're not in this country. They're over in another part of the world. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm hoping that we can get into production later on this year and we can be ready and we should be out and filming by, um, uh, I'm hoping by January. Nice. We can get everything together right there. There's a lot of stuff. We shoot all over the world in this in this particular thing. We're shooting in the in the Strait of uh, Malacca, uh, not the Strait of Malacca, but the uh, Strait of Hormuz. And, we, and we're shooting in uh, in, the, in the Sea of Oman. Uh, we're shooting in uh, Hawaii. We shoot in um, Washington D.C., Virginia, uh, and we're shooting in the. the another area we're shooting where they they make it with the u2 spy planes usually come out of which is up in northern california okay um we should probably shoot that base peel air force base and um yeah like that so i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of different locations oh we're going to shoot it with we we're going to be shooting down in, um we have a bunch of seals that are going to be in the movie so we have to shoot down there and there's a base in uh, um What's that country down there? They have a big water tank. We'll be shooting down in that area too, just uh, for one sequence of it. Um, so um, you know, I'm I'm very excited about it, but it's it's so bloody hard to put something like yeah. this together. It is just an impossible thing. This is like the longest day, you know. You've got all those characters, mm -hmm. in it, and this has got like this has got a hundred at least a hundred actors in it. That's a um, lot, yeah. So it's 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 um, it'll be, but it's going to be damn good. It's going to be damn good. So when the new movie w will be will be will be done, it'll be premiered. Can we count on you that we'll get a let's say another interview, not about the Hellraiser, but about the about the new movie? Absolutely, I'll give you I'll give you first first shot at it. You heard it. You heard it only on in here yeah. on our channel. Ken Carpenter will tell us all about a, about a new new movie and all. See, we'll ask him all the spicy details, you know, about it. Like, I'll show you footage too, so to, to back up. Ooh, sure. e even better, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, Ken, uh, like right now, I know we are, we are chatting probably right now around two hours, and I would say our interview will just come down probably to a, a 30, 45 minutes, you know. Listen, lads, I have to keep some parts for myself, you know, just to keep it. Uh, oh. It was it was seriously it was pleasure to to talk to you. I don't know should I say Ken or should I send uh, said a dog or camera head? You know, like I would just say Ken Carpenter. It was a pleasure seriously to to have a chance to chat with the with the true legend of the of the Hellraiser family, if if I can say it. You know. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you can, Marcin, you can call me anytime you want. Listen, lads, I have Ken's Ken's phone number. If you'd like to get it. Forget it. There is no way I'm not sharing it, but you know, it it is uh, our private. Once more, uh, Ken. Yeah, 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 but for sure, you can call me anytime. No problem. Thank you very much, Ken. Ladies and gentlemen, if you love the gentleman, check in the description. In the description, there are a link to his books. Go get it, buy it. You know, you'll see. You'll know the story of the new movie before it'll be released. It's always better, you know. You can then say, "Oh, did I prefer the book or the or the movie?" You know, but it's the chat for the completely different uh, diff different time. Exactly. Once more, thank you very much. Bye. Perfect. Hey, Larson. Take care, and uh, I'll talk to you soon.